This example problem shows just how relative it is that certain events happen in different orders in time. In fact, time can be reordered by just boosting to a different reference frame. We're going to suppose that two events take place at two different locations in space and time. One has a pair of coordinates x1 and t1 given by a value x0 and x0 over c. The second event has a x2 and t2 given by 2x0, in other words, twice the location, and x0 over 2c, in other words, half the time. There is a frame, s prime, in which these two events will look simultaneous. And my question will be, at what velocity does s prime move relative to s in order to make this to be so? Furthermore, we can ask what will be the new value of time, the common time of these two space-time events as viewed in the other reference frame s prime. It's best to draw a picture first and, and plot these two events on a graph of x and ct. p1 and p2 would look something like this because p1 is about at the 45 degree mark. Right? It should have exactly the same spatial coordinate and sp same time coordinate when plotted as c times t. The second space-time event should be twice as far along on the x-axis, but half as far along on the ct-axis. Immediately, one can get some sense of what the problem is doing, because they share right now no, nothing in common. They're not at the same time, and they're not at the same x-location. But our hope is to find a frame s prime in which they have a common time. The time it will have to just dive right through, and of course the time, the draw, the ray that we draw through the two points should be parallel to the x-axis, or the x-prime axis, in this new reference frame. Since the x-prime axis has to be parallel now to the red dashed line, it has to look something like this. And we can see that this involves a Lorentz boost that moves backwards along the negative x-axis. As a result, the positive x direction will move along the negative x axis and the negative x prime ax axis will move in the positive x axis. That also means that the ct prime axis will look like this. It's tilted over to the left. We can start to solve this now algebraically. We seek a new time t prime that's common amongst the two points. And we'll use the Lorentz boost. We'll say that ct1 prime is equal to ct2 prime and we'll use the Lorentz transformation equations for t1 prime and t2 prime. Since we know that we're boosting to the left in the negative x direction, we're going to write, use the Lorentz boosts with a positive sign here and the beta term. So we're going to write that gamma ct1 plus beta x1 equals gamma ct2 plus beta x2. And we're going to plug in the values for x1 and x2 and t1 and t2 as shown. Ct1 is just x0, x1 is just x0, Ct2 is half x0, and x2 is 2x0. Now we need to solve algebraically. We find that we can divide by gamma, we don't need to know that. And we find that half x0 is equal to beta x0, or if we divide by x0, we find that beta is a half. In other words, the one frame is approximately moving at speed, half the speed of light relative to the other. Plugging in beta for the formula for gamma, we find that gamma is 2 over the square root of 3. And this gives us the new time, ct prime, is equal to gamma ct1 plus beta x1, which we can now solve. That works out to be square root of 3 times x0. So it's a little bit longer than either of the two times plotted originally. And that makes sense, because if we look at the ct prime coordinate here, it's the distance off of the x prime axis, and it looks to be longer uh, than it was for either uh, t1 or t2. Notice that these two points uh, could be reordered in time so that they're now simultaneous, they're not sequential. That's not surprising because the invariant in this case calculated between these two things turns out to be a number less than zero. In other words, they're further separated along the x-axis than they are along the time axis. As a result, when we calculate s between these two things, it comes out to be s squared is negative. And we know that whenever the invariant is negative, it's possible to reorder the time. In fact, there's probably another Lorentz frame in which we can make p1 happen before p2 just by moving at a fast enough velocity between the two frames.